Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I would just give you guys an update of what I've been up to for the past couple of weeks. So I've been doing more of a deep dive into smart contract CTFs recently, partly because of all the recent things that happened in the industry. This one, for example, the wormhole crypto exploit where somebody stole 250 million worth of ETH from this smart contract project. And if you read through the technical details of this exploit, it essentially comes down to the smart contract not validating the signatures properly. And then there is this record breaking 2.1 million bug bounty. It's actually 2.1 because another different entity added 100k to this bounty a couple of days later. For this one, the Optimism developers created their own version of Ethereum and they did not implement the self-destruct function properly, which caused the bug. And then there is this one, which technically isn't really a smart contract hack. It is a pretty basic exploit, which is just a validation issue on an API. But all this kind of gives you the feeling that this industry is kind of like the wild west at the moment and companies are willing to pay a lot in this industry to find bugs so to get started learning this i played around with this damn vulnerable DeFi ctf which i showed in a previous video this is probably not the best one to get started on learning Ethereum and the vulnerabilities that is associated with it because you have to pretty much set up your own infrastructure for this one, I finished the first challenge, which I made a video on. Better CTF challenges to get started with is Ethernaut and Capture the Ether. These are two pretty beginner friendly CTFs that you can actually start to interact with them in the browser itself. So you can open up the console and interact with this contract right here in the browser so you don't actually have to set up any infrastructure to get started which makes it really easy for beginners i've gone through about 20 challenges in this ethernaut ctf which also has the benefit of learning more about code reviews. So I've been at this pen testing job for about nine to 10 months now. And I think at this point is where a programming starts to become a factor where uh, if you want to progress further technically in this industry, you need to know some programming. So people, uh, obviously, they always ask whether you need to be a programmer or no programming to be a pen tester. I think definitely you can get started in this industry without programming knowledge. But to progress further, you will need to know some programming. And this CTF is really great in terms of getting you to read a snippet of code, understand it, and then write your own code to attack the contract to perform some sort of exploit on it. I think getting more and more into a coding and code reviews is probably the more technical way to go if you want to progress your skills technically further as a pen tester. So this is a pretty good exercise for me to go through and um, yeah, just get more into the programming and code review side of things. Like the previous video where I showed the first challenge of damn vulnerable DeFi, I ported all of these into the Brownie framework again and also um, wrote my exploit uh, scripts in here as well. I have uploaded these to GitHub if you want to check it out and try this Ethernaut challenge. I won't do a walkthrough of these challenges because I'm pretty much still learning it myself and I've mostly solved these challenges from looking at walkthroughs. I think this is pretty much the best way to learn in the beginning. You want a lot of a comprehensible input, so to speak. Taking a playbook from learning a new language where it means learning by seeing a lot of solutions and once you see a lot of solutions, you slowly start to pick up 
on the common threads and then you build out a sort of mental mind map of what you're supposed to do and look for. So doing CTFs is kind of like, I think the cheat code to learning security because if you've ever sat in school at a very technical and theoretical class, you'll learn a lot of stuff, but your mind wouldn't really focus on it because it's too theoretical and you would think that uh, why would you ever need this? So for CTFs, you learn the thing, you apply the thing, and it kind of tricks your brain into giving the knowledge a bit more a practicality and weight to it because you're actually using to solve a challenge which makes learning new things a much easier and I think much more enjoyable as well. I'll just show you guys how this code works in terms of interacting with this first fallback challenge. Click this uh, get new instance button. Uh, you have to set up your MetaMask or the Brave wallet if you're using the Brave browser. So click this and it'll generate you a new instance for this. It actually deploys it to the RinkB test network. So you can interact with it by uh, the console like so. The instance address is that. So to grab that, you can type contract dot address copy this and go to the deploy fallback python script and put this into there and this code runs through the transactions interacting with the contract to exploit the contract and win the challenge for you so to run this go brownie run specify the Rink B network and hit enter. This will run through this code on the Rink B network and once that's done the challenge will be solved. I put some comments in the code to make it a bit more clear on what is happening but I think if you're solving these challenges for the first time it's probably best to read a detailed walkthrough exactly what is happening. But I think this is a pretty good resource if you just want the solution code. So once all of these transactions have been made, uh, you can go back to the Ethernaut page and click Submit Instance. And once that transaction goes through, uh, we would get a confirmation that we have solved the challenge. So there it is, well done, you have completed this level. For really good walkthroughs on these challenges, I recommend you watch these videos here by the Web3 blockchain developer. It's really detailed and it pretty much walks you through a lot of the nuances of smart contract exploits, which I really enjoyed. I pretty much watched most of these videos. Even if I've solved the challenge, I went back and watched these videos just to see if there's something I missed. A lot of useful tips in there. Another pretty beginner friendly CTF is Capture the Ether. This is pretty similar to the Ethernaut CTF but you don't really get a browser console to interact with these contracts. And a lot of the concepts in here is pretty much covered in Ethernaut as well. I might go through some of these later after I finish the Ethernaut challenges just to solidify things a bit more for me. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Learning more about Ethereum vulnerabilities, doing CTFs on this subject. It's pretty enjoyable getting more into the code level stuff, writing a bit more code. And you know, like I said, this industry I think is undervalued in terms of the cybersecurity industry most people don't really take the crypto world very seriously but there is a lot of vulnerabilities in here there it feels like the wild west and people are paying massive bounties for vulnerabilities so this industry is not going away it's going to be really good to learn this and get into the front foot of things and even if I don't have the opportunity to actually order any smart contracts in my current job, the code review knowledge is going to be coming in handy for all sorts of stuff. Because coding knowledge is transferable. I've had a lot of people ask me, 
what programming languages to learn when first getting started. Pretty much any programming language is okay because most of the knowledge you get in terms of programming, it's conceptual and the knowledge is very easily transferable once you get comfortable with a reading and writing code. I do still plan to do the Burp Suite Practitioner Cert. I do have a coupon for that, which I bought for $9 last year, so I'm definitely gonna go for that. But I feel at this point where, when you are already in this industry, there's not really a big rush to just stack up on certs and sort of have that collect them all mentality. Certifications should be sort of used as a tool to get you to where you want to be in terms of career progression. And once you've done that, you can sort of just gravitate towards your interests. And if you find another cert, which will obviously progress your career in some direction, then take it. But at this point, I don't see too much value into collecting massive amount of certs. Pretty much I will go for them at my pace. I will learn various other things that uh, I find interesting and get exposed to and just go down various rabbit holes just to expand in general more of my cybersecurity knowledge. All right, that's it for my little update. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.